In this video, I want to talk about how to find the eigenvalues of ordinary differential equations with MATLAB. Uh, we're going to use finite difference approach and um, just use a standard benchmark problem to demonstrate the principles. So here's our model problem. It's a simple linear second order ordinary differential equation. Y double prime plus lambda squared Y is zero. Boundary conditions are homogeneous. Y of zero equals Y of one equals zero. And this equation only has solutions for certain values of lambda. And in fact, you can demonstrate that analytically. I'm not going to go through it here, but the values of lambda for which there is a solution to the equation are integer multiples of pi and the um, a corresponding eigenfunctions are some magnitude times the sine of n pi x. So <clears throat> I want to demonstrate how to use MATLAB to find these eigenvalues or at least approximations and then we'll compare them to these known values at the end. So to do the finite differences, we replace the second derivative term with a standard um, central operator. Okay, so yi represents uh, the value of y at mesh point i. H is the mesh mesh spacing. Okay, so we just plug in that finite difference approximation for the second derivative. Um, put in yi for this term here. And then all we do th is multiply through by h squared and collect terms of yi, and we get this, okay? So yi minus 1 minus the quantity 2 minus lambda squared h squared yi plus yi plus 1 is 0. We can write this equation at a series of mesh points. That gives us uh, a series of algebraic equations. And then um, we'll use MATLAB to find the values of lambda for which a solution exists for that algebraic system and see how well those approximate the system for the differential equation. So for the sample, I'm going to choose uh, eight regions in my mesh. So I have boundary conditions at x equals 0 and 1. So I'm looking on the interval 0 less than x less than 1. I divide that into eight intervals. So h now is 1 over 8. This produces nine mesh points because I have the two ends plus the seven internal points. The boundary conditions tell you the values at the ends. Those are both zero. So we're left with seven unknowns, which is seven, the seven internal mesh points. If I write that algebraic equation at those seven unknowns, then I have seven equations, seven unknowns, and then I can deal with the system. So here's what it looks like written as a matrix equation. So those seven unknowns y are in this represented by this vector y. Okay. So then I have this matrix, a tridiagonal matrix, minus two on the diagonal and one's on the off diagonal. That times y plus lambda squared a squared y is zero. And this is looks like the equation for the eigenvalues of a matrix. Right. So the eigenvalues of this matrix are defined by this equation as long as we call those eigenvalues E and let them be minus lambda squared A squared. So if I find the eigenvalues of the matrix, uh, and there's seven of them in this case, then I'll get seven values for EI. For each of those, I can solve this equation and get seven values for lambda, and those should represent some approximation to the eigenvalues of the differential equation. So here's code to do that, all right? So I set n equal to 7 because I'm going to have a 7 by 7 matrix. H is the mesh spacing, which is 1 8 in this case, or 1 over n plus 1. Then I have a couple of equations here set up to, to do the tridiagonal. So the minus 2 times i of n sets up a, uh, an identity matrix with, instead of 1s, we have minus 2s on the diagonal. And then these other two terms put the ones on the off diagonal, and so this gives me my matrix. Then I can find the eigenvalues of that. The, the MATLAB function is eig. Eig of my mat gives me the eigenvalues of that. And then I sort those in a descending order, and that gives me my seven values for the little e. Then to find lambda, I take the square root of the negative of those values, 
and then divide by h and those should give me seven values for lambda divide that by pi to check uh, remember the the analytical solution was n pi so if I divide by pi I should get integers all right so then I just do some plots to check how well the um, numerical values give me uh, integers and then I look at the error in that and we'll look at those results so for n equals 7 uh, if all the values are integers then they would lie in this straight line that's the analytical solution and you can see that the um, numerical solution deviates from that quite a bit so for the smaller values it's quite accurate uh, and then it gets relatively inaccurate for the last values all right so the error is largest for the higher eigenvalues and best for the lower eigenvalues so um, and that's true in general for this kind of equation so we can expect the best accuracy for the lowest eigenvalues and poor accuracy for the last ones if I look at the error here on a log plot this is relative error so the difference in the eigenvalues um, normalized by pi divided by the uh, analytical value then it's uh, less than 1% error down here for the low values and um, what 20% uh, error up here at the high end and the error monotonically increases as we go to the higher eigenvalues. If we increase the number of mesh points, we should expect more accuracy. And so this now is represents a plot of 2,000 eigenvalues, uh, the analytical ones here on the straight line, and then the numerical ones here on the blue line. And so you can see, again, this trend that the accuracy is best for the lower eigenvalues and not good at all for the higher eigenvalues. And we'll look at the relative error again. This is on a log plot, but you can see we get errors like 10 to the minus 7 for our small, smaller eigenvalues. And then it increases rapidly. It's 1% by the time you get to eigenvalues around 300. And then it's, again, 20% or 30% at the highest end. So we get pretty good results for the smaller values and the more eigenvalues you need accurately the more mesh points you're going to have to use to get that result so that's about how this works it's relatively straightforward um, you just have to be careful setting up these matrices and then interpreting the results if you do that properly you should be able to um, have success doing this with MATLAB